Good morning. Good to see you all here. Morning came a little too soon for me with the time change, so uh, I hope that wasn't the case for you, but we'll, we'll catch up later on our sleep. A few announcements. Um, so, council discussed, and we are following the guidelines given by our parish nurses and following guidelines from the CDC on masking. Um, and so, masks are optional. Um, we do ask, if you are not feeling well, and this would kind of be, you know, common sense, um, that, that you might choose to watch the service online um, and stay home. Communion assistants and myself will continue to use gloves for communion, and I will continue to mask um, just because if there's someone who is still feeling um, that masking is the best choice for them, I would not want anyone to feel nervous about coming up for communion. So I'm going to continue to wear my mask through at least Easter and then, and then I'll reassess. But uh, this is good news. It's good to be together and it's good to see one another. And, uh, and so um, we can give thanks for the direction everything is going. Speaking of giving thanks, um, this sanctuary is going to get a refresher. It's going to get painted on the ceiling. I don't know if you ever look up there, but it could use some paint, which means that for the Wednesday service this week, potentially, we're not sure, but it might mean that Wednesday service in the evening will, um, will be with scaffolding or with lifts, and it might mean, and I, I apologize ahead of time, that we might have to all sit on one side together. And it's, no, it's, it's, uh, so I'm preparing you now in case that event. Um, you know, so it might be the right, might be the left, but whichever side it is, we'll be together and our sanctuary will be beautified and bright and wonderful. Um, it shouldn't affect our services next week. We intend to get it done uh, within the week. So just, just a note for your planning. Um, also for planning, many of you have said, how can we help those in need in the Ukraine? And so the ELCA has opportunities for you to help. It's all in your bulletin. I would point out, and this comes at the recommendation of a member. This is why we are a team together. Um, boy, it would make things easier to help if someone could make a check to St. John and put in the memo section um, LWR, which is Lutheran World Relief, Ukraine. That's where we can send funds to help those in need. And so if you do that or you put some kind of note on your check that says Ukraine Relief, that's where we'll send your check. So just to make things a little more streamlined and easier for you. Um, otherwise, you can read all about everything else that is happening um, I think that's everything I have, and so, and so, I invite you to rise, whether in body or spirit, for our call to worship. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, to know and proclaim Jesus Christ, and as disciples reach out in love. Let us worship the Lord. We now come together to confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen.
Our gathering hymn this morning is My Faith Looks Up to Thee on the screen or in your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. It's time for the choir to sing.
A reading from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You've given me no offspring, so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue will be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them all. Then he said to them, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from your of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer, three years old, a female goat, three years old, a ram, three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Take your descendants, I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river of Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now read Psalm 27 responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers close in against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes, and my enemies will stumble and fall. Through, though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to see God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted above all my enemies who surround me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary, sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks to your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. Check me not to the will of my foes, for they rise up against me false witnessing, reading violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eyes for the gospel.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I'm going to continue my, my chat with the children. I know that some of our children are probably shy. We've been out of practice. If there's any children that want to come up, they can. But if they don't, that's okay, too. We'll work into this. So um, you may not know this, but um, I, I am an appreciator of chickens. I really do like chickens. Um, and I actually, in my office, have... A little chick that was made, I think, by Kathy Krolikowski some years ago for uh, one of our uh, Lutheran World Service uh, uh, collections. Here's my little chick. Um, and I actually got my knitting needles out one year, and, and I knit a little, a little bunny hat that you could put on an Easter egg. So I, I couldn't find an egg to put it on, though. So here's the hat. You can see. And actually, downstairs, as I was looking for an egg... To put my hat on, I found this book. This is actually a book that I used to have at home when my kids were very small. It's about a chicken named Rosie, and she's walking, and she's followed by a fox, and it's got a lot of twists and turns and, uh, you know, uh, a plot line. And, but what I love about it is this chicken, this Rosie, and, and the drawings of her uh, making her way through peril and danger with the fox following her. Um, I just do love chickens. And so thank goodness today's reading has a chicken in it, it has the image of a hen. Um, so I want to talk about that because it's one of those Lent readings um, that, that transcends that it provides an image that may seem a little odd, but an image of God as a, as a mother hen uh, is what we are going to explore today. So when I'm out walking, and I walk by chickens in many backyards, I have my favorite chickens, and those are the ones in the picture, along uh, Highway County K. And I've been watching those chickens for some years now. I have noticed that those chickens, um, they roam everywhere, but there is a busy road, and they, and they do get close, and I, I worry about them. Um, that cliche is true about the chickens in the roads. And I noticed also, sadly, this winter that as I walked, there were, there were a couple chickens laying very still in a field. And I, I went by a couple days. They actually laid there a couple days, and then all of a sudden they were gone. <laughs> So those, those were chickens that didn't make it, that did not make it. This description in the Gospel of Luke, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets, stones those who are sent to it, says Jesus, how often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing I know you can picture what Jesus is describing because, of course, you know chickens too. But have you ever thought of God like a hen, like a mother hen, like a mother hen whose chicks have rejected her? 
not an image I, I often have of God. It's a bit startling. I'm, I mean, the image I have of God often is one of power and cleverness and success. And so for Jesus to use the picture of a hen is odd. Jesus could have, if Jesus wanted to, use an image of a, an enraged she-bear. That's an image of God that we find in the Old Testament. There's another image of God as a soaring eagle, a mother eagle. God as a, a laboring woman working hard. God as a skilled midwife helping. Those are not the images Jesus chooses in this story, however. In the second Sunday in Lent, the gospel invites us to think of Jesus as a mother hen. As a mother hen whose chicks don't want her anymore. And she stands with her wings wide open. She is offering welcome and belonging and shelter. And yet her children refuse to come to her. Her wings are empty. In the verses that precede this, this heartbreaking, really, description, a group of Pharisees, again, another odd thought. Pharisees don't tend to like Jesus, but a group have come to warn Jesus to leave the area, this place where he's teaching and he's healing, because they say Herod wants to kill him. Jesus knows that Herod is dangerous, right? Warrants caution, but he tells the Pharisees he's not afraid of that fox. He says, I have work left to do. I have work left to do. At this point in the story, Jesus has set his course for Jerusalem. You may have heard the phrase, he's turned his face toward Jerusalem. Now, it's not because Jesus is unknowing of what awaits him there. But he's not going to change his course, not for Herod, not for anyone. And even as he stands up to a fox like Herod, Jesus also describes himself as a grieving mother whose children have wandered away. What are these images to offer us on our Lenten journey this year? Well, much like last week during Lent, we are called to embrace our needs, our vulnerabilities. Jesus mocks Herod by calling him a fox, but he never says that fox isn't dangerous. What Jesus, the mother hen, offers is not the absence of danger. Instead, what Jesus offers is the fullness of his unguarded, open-hearted, holy, vulnerable self in the face of all that threatens and scares. What he will give will be his body, his life. And what he promises, and he does so at great risk to himself, is the making of his very being into a place of refuge and return for his children, for all of his children, even the ones who want to stone and kill him. Jesus' wings will yet be wide open. So maybe what we need most this Lent is not a fox-like God, not a, a divinity that wields power with intelligence and sharp teeth. Maybe what we need is a mother hen who calls to us, her wings held bravely open. Now, secondly, during Lent, we are called to lamentation, which is not lamination, I caution, that's what we do with your name tags. No, lamentation, sorrow, grieving. You don't have to be a parent to mourn the missed opportunities, the broken promises, or crushed hopes. All of us, all of us, regardless of our circumstance, we know what it's like to feel rejected. We know what it's like to long and find no fulfillment for that longing. 
Sometimes, like Jesus the mother hen, we can't do what we most desire to do. We can't give what we long to give. We can't save the loved ones we ache to save. Finally, during Lent, we're called to return. You were not willing, Jesus tells his wandering children, you would not come back. There's that image of chicks snuggling under a mother hen's wings. It's an image of gathering, isn't it? Of community, of intentional oneness. And that requires a return. What in us, this Lent, is not willing to be gathered, not willing to surrender to community, to the people God places in our lives for our own growth, our deepening? Where in our lives have we chosen to go it alone, rejecting that messy human connection because it feels maybe too risky, maybe too time-consuming? Honestly, loving a vulnerable mother hen God is riskiest thing some of us can imagine doing. Some of us might prefer the lion. I know there are days I would like the lion or the infuriated bear to be my protector. And yet it is the yearning mother hen. That's the mother we belong to. She's weeping for us. She's calling us home. And the home she's calling to us is profoundly communal. The reach of her wings is wide. The hospitality of her shelter is vast. She will never not call us home. This weekend has been, I think, for many families, for many in the community, and for sure for many parents, a weekend of ambivalence for our basketball players, for any of our athletes who are seniors and have gone to state, for, and this is particular to me, for our coraliers, although I don't have a senior, but those who do, there is a sense of letting go. And it's hard. I've heard people say and have had a tear myself for these young people who will soon leave. During the Coralier Home Show, and there's one left if you want to go, shameless plug right there, it's at two. During the Home Show, there's a song that the seniors sing. This is tradition. I'm not going to give away that song. But the song does speak to this ambivalence of children growing up and leaving. And it speaks to the worry we have for their safety, for their tender heart. It's just like the worry of a mother hen for her chicks who yet have that touch of soft down, not yet fully adult-fledged with the feathers. How often have I desired to gather you, says Jesus. During this wilderness season of repentance and transformation, may the longing of Jesus become our longing too. May the way of the mother hen, the way of vulnerability and sorrow, hope, and eternal welcome lead us home. Amen. This morning, we have a hymn of the day, as we always do. It's number 613, the holy wings. Thy holy wings, because that's a biblical word. Let's sing it together, remain seated.
I now invite you to rise as we, with the whole church, confess our faith with the words found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystem and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Most merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You hear us when we cry to you. Attend to those expecting a child. Console those who've experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving today in our prayers. We keep Sandy, who will have surgery on Thursday, a friend of Yvonne Brecky, in our prayers. We also keep all who've experienced times of concern, whether it be health or otherwise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower our Sunday school teachers, our confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generations. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And in keeping with God's commandments to pray for others, we first pray for those who celebrate their birthday this month. We pray for Owen. We pray for Bernice. We pray for Laverne. We also pray for ministry partners for the mission and ministry of Bethany Lutheran Church next door in the Wisconsin Dells. We pray for those who will have procedures this week, including Sandy. Now, Lord, let us fill this place with the prayers of our hearts, unspoken maybe, but always heard. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated. It's time for our morning offering.
I invite you to rise. God of all creation, all you have made is good. Your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. You nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world, signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one as we are by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. You may be seated. This morning we receive communion up front. The ushers will indicate. We go side by side. When you come up, you may receive a wafer. We have a gluten-free alternative. If you need, just let me know. You can take and eat it right away. And then proceed to Myron, who is the communion assistant today, who will have the tray of cups. In some cups are dark wine, some light juice. Indicate which you prefer. Take, drink. And then on your way back to your seat, you can dispose of your cups in the little baskets. Come, for all is ready.
rise. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Our sending hymn is 324. We're going to sing the whole thing, and it's in the cross of Christ I glory. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.